Well, it was, it, it actually, it's a traumatic experience. Uh, but, uh, you know, I was uh, coming back from Delta State between Okene and uh, Lokoja. We were stopped by this government and uh, they opened fire at, asked my driver to stop. And he stopped. The next thing they came and asked us to come down from the car and took us into the bush, running for over 30 minutes. You know. So initially, I thought they were armed robbers. And uh, I told them, since you are looking for money, whatever money you, you've seen in my purse, you can take and uh, let's go. They said, do you think we are robbers? We are not robbers, we are kidnappers. It was then it dawned on me that I was in serious trouble. You know, and uh, we moved into the bush for a very long time. Almost two hours we were trekking until we got to a place under the tree that they said that's our hotel. And uh, we sat down there. And about, uh, maybe 10 o'clock in the night, because this happened around 4. Before we contact was made with my younger brother, and negotiation started. How we should be released? We were in that bush for four days before we were eventually released. I didn't eat for four days, although they were cooking and tried to give us food. But the kind of food they were cooking is not what I would eat. I'd rather stay hungry, no water to drink. So I relied more on uh, cashew, fresh cashew fruits that was uh, abundant in the forest there. <clears throat> I was released around 11 in the night and uh, by the time we got to Abuja here it was uh, almost 3. I didn't need to sleep. The first thing I did was to go to mass. So when I came into the church by 6 o'clock, the church erupted, you know, that uh, people didn't believe that I was a person because they didn't know it, that I had already been released. But the first thing I did was to go to church to thank God that early morning and uh, they sang and danced and I was very happy. The, the prognostic factor is your degree of support. That, de that, that will determine how well you process trauma and loss. Uh, that that's the predictive outcome uh, factor or variable. So, you know, there's art therapy, there's cognitive processing therapy, there's grief grief counseling, there's EMDR. You know, there are different uh, other that, that narrative therapy uh, is a very good one. Exposure therapy in a controlled environment. These are all uh, evidence-based treatments for, for trauma. So the thing is to get assessed and to then have those treatments applied to, to you and your situation. There are some people that theorize that unless tra trauma and loss and grief, unless they are processed through the community, that it's very difficult for it to completely resolve. You know, because of the isolating nature of trauma, uh, you know, you, you go through disbelief and, and, and shock, you know, and so many people withdraw to themselves. As a community reverses that, you know, it, you know, you can stand united in community and process grief together as a community. For my family, you know, when I came out, it was a joyous uh, moment for everybody. Especially my friends. My friends played a major role to ensure that I was uh, released. And uh, that's what friends are for. Sit back and take the journey with us on this edition of Kendio as we go through the stages of coping with loss and trauma.